Hey y'all, William D. Pongo Ferry. Now today we're about 73 miles southeast of Cape Henry, fishing the edge of the continental shelf in an area that we call the Triple Zeros. We're aboard my nephew Justin's boat, Wild Thing. And along with us are my buddies Victor, Paul, Melvin, and Matthew from Big River, Saskatchewan. And we're gonna see if we can put them on a billfish, maybe a tuna, a dolphin, or even a wahoo. And we're gonna take y'all along with us too. So don't go nowhere, cause you don't wanna miss this. For as long ago as a quarter century, my Big River boys have been putting my son Trey and me on the trophy bucks, the trophy bears, and some big old trophy fish way up in the Canadian wilderness of northern Saskatchewan. And now they have traveled here to my neck of the woods for a blue water adventure of their own. And my nephew Justin and I intend to provide for them just that. This ain't Big River, buddy. No, it sure isn't. <laughs> what do you say, Melvin? Ready, you got some fish? I hear you, buddy. All right. This ain't Big River, is it, Vic? It ain't not. It's, it's... It ain't Poplar Point, either. Good morning. Good morning, Polly. Now we're sailing. Another fish. I think so too. I had a mic, man. I'm 
marked the spot, so. Cool. Nice white marlin. There he is. Hey! That is a nice, that's nice. A nice that's, that's, a, that's, that's a big white marlin. It is. I think that's a rat blue. Hey! Nice. That's a blue marlin. It is a blue marlin. Pretty marlin. All right, Mel, what we're going after. Ciao, Mel. Come over to me, Melvin. Come over to me. Okay. Oh. He might come out of the water. He's gonna come up. Just stand over there, please. He's taking line. Good job, Melvin. Keep him coming, buddy. Keep that line level with your thumb. You're doing a great job. There you go. Alright, he's gonna come up and jump. Let me get my pliers. Alright, Mel, we're going after. You might start putting that camera. You got it underwater thick.
pump it, pump it a little bit, Melvin, and, and just. All right, yeah, that's right. Once I get on that spider hitch, I'm good, right? No. no I gotta get all the way you gotta get to the leader. That's right. He's swimming away from us. He might be tail wrapped. If he's tail wrapped, we want to try to get it off of his tail. Don't grab that double line. Don't break that line. Keep that tip right down just like that when you do it. Took some line there. You see the green yeah. in the water uh, bit? I did a couple times. That's where you want to be aiming that camera. Yeah. We're on the double line now. Rich, back Come up, on. Melvin. Back up. Come on, back up. Back up. Back up. Don't right, want to get under the under boat. Under. Reach, Austin. He's coming under the boat. All right. We got him. All right, now, Cotty, when he touches the leader, he's considered caught. All right. Okay. Don't, don't break him off, Justin. Try to hold him. I'm going to get some good footage. I'm going to try to get a hand wrap on, maybe. It's just an easy hand wrap, not, uh, not so it breaks. I wouldn't even try, I wouldn't even really wrap it. I would just kind of pull it. Melvin, congratulations, buddy. Thank you. You have caught the first billfish on the wild thing. Yeah. And a, Good yeah. job, buddy. Hey. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> Thank you. Matthew, hey, tomorrow will be a Kobe for you. Perfect. Still bigger than the northern pike we catch? That's right. Right on. Seeing as how there were two large thunderheads rolling off the beach back to the northwest, we decided to strike a course towards home that would require a bit of a dog leg to the south in an attempt to steer between the two threatening storms. We could already see a good bit of lightning dancing to the north and south, so I steered Wild Thing towards a somewhat brighter sky in between. Work, Melvin. Thanks, Mel. Fixed the windshield, kept me from drowning, made it through the thunderstorms. Yeah. And there's what we got to show for the day. A flag flying upside down. <laughs> Pretty work. That ain't no northern pike though. And we got right between those two thunderstorms without sinking, crashing on the rocks, throwing anybody off the boat. To tell a fish story too. Yeah, it's a real good one. If you're going to run almost 75 miles offshore in search of big game fish and you only catch one, a blue marlin is the one to catch. And Melvin did just that with a little help from the rest of us. And a fish of a lifetime too. I estimated the blue to weigh somewhere in the range of 175 to 200 pounds. Pretty work, Melvin. The next morning, I dropped the boys off to meet Justin where he was going to try to guide Matthew to a cobia on the Chesapeake Bay. I circled back to the ranch to fix them up a Congo Curry style barbecue for when they got in.
one inch. Of water. You got a tape measure? I got one in that bucket right there. Okay. Oh, you're at 41. It's right at 41 amp. Yeah, that's a key button. Yeah. That's a key button. Right at 41. All right, hold it up and get a picture there, man. Okay, these things have sharp. And just like that, thanks to Captain Justin, Matthew had a nice 40 pound cobia. Melvin's Blue Marlin may have provided a bit more glitz, glamour, and excitement, but I'm pretty sure Matthew's cobia is going to taste a whole lot better than that flag. We had hoped to get in one more day fishing offshore, but the wind out on the rip was a bit more stiff than we wanted to deal with, so my good buddy Dougie offered to take us out fishing on Back Bay. I'll tell you guys what I tell a lot of people. We do Airbnb here, and I take people out once in a while for, you know, white perch and bass and whatever we can catch out here on Back Bay. And I tell them, you know, what we can do is we're going to go for a nice boat ride today. If we catch a fish, that's bonus. Yep. Right? <laughs> we're going to have a really nice side of really nice boat We get some pretty good yellow perch in our place. there buddy crappies what you guys call her i think yeah you got those up there in cow and leg nope none of these <laughs> all right melvin it's your turn yeah nice hey, white perch hold on one second that's like don't pull it up that's a nice one there that's that's what we want to catch right there all right we got there blue a crappie so matthew got one you decided you had to get one too yeah now i can cross that off my bucket list all right go catch some more He's missing two legs. A quadriplegic, paraplegic crab. <laughs> so I'm this cottonmouth water moccasin was hoping to hitch a ride with us back across the bay, but we said no thanks. And yes, Virginia, that snake can be deadly as a heart attack. Besides, we grilled one up this past spring, and that thing was like chewing on a mouthful of rubber bands. Whatever you do in this life, do it with love and do it with passion. I don't care if it's needlepoint or sewing quilts. Sew the most beautiful quilts on the planet. Do what gives you that sense of fulfillment, so long as it doesn't deny someone else's. But just as important as that, build bonds with family or friends along the way. Lifelong bonds that can never be broken. Create fond memories that'll last a lifetime and beyond. I almost didn't take that first trip to northern Saskatchewan back in the spring of 93, and had I not, I shudder to think what I would have missed. The Dorval family has become my own family in Canada. Our adventures together are many. When he was just five months old, I carried Matthew into the bush to his dad Victor's wilderness bear hunting camp for his very first time. I traveled back to Saskatoon to deliver his granddaddy Lawrence's eulogy in 2004. Don't be afraid to take that calculated risk. It could very well reveal a treasure of wealth that can't be measured by stacks upon stacks of money. Relationships are everything when our journey on this side of the river is through, and I will always treasure mine with my boys from Big River and the rest of their family too. And that, girls and boys, is what's happening on the Pungo Prairie. Any day on the water is a good day though. 